Hi guys, it's Andy the GD Script Dude with a video based on my latest project. Sorry I haven't uh, uploaded anything for a long time, but I've been really like like obsessed with this this new project of a digital logic uh, tutorial kind of app or game kind of thing. And this video is about a what I call a notification pop-up, you know, when you click on something it's like a button there's not sometimes you don't the user of the software doesn't notice anything change and then this is going to make a little pop-up window with a message that fades away automatically so let's just see what it does let's run the, the scene we we'll click here to run this actual scene and look down there it says hello then the quick prone fox just jumps up and loads his log and then bye and it fades away like that so in that sequence, let's run it again. You can see it starts off with a small text, like just hello, and then it makes a wider one, and then it, it contracts to a, the wide, and then goes to narrow. That's a little bit tricky to get working properly, but I got it done, and this, this is the scene for it. And if we go to the actual game, or the, if we try to, if we, see that's got built-in testing if we use it in the actual application it's called integration testing so let's let's go and run it in the actual application let's start from the beginning and we click here and we select something uh, oh actually no I want to choose a different I'm simulating circuits and drawing circuits and teaching people how to make circuits so we've got this one here and if we click this button it saves it but before it, it just like you couldn't really tell it had saved so we, I want a notification down here saying saved so we click it see it says saved and then it fades away there's no need to like it's a, with pop-up windows sometimes you have you have to click OK or X to close it all this like pops up it's like the most basic good node for pop-ups just called the pop-up Anyway, let's go back and check out the code or the the scene itself. Here's the hierarchy. We've got the the name of it's called notification pop-up based on a control, a simple control node. And then the first child is a pop-up panel. That's the simplest pop-up you can get, I think. So it's just pop-up. Well, one of the simplest, I should say. Let's check it out. If you add a node saying you go pop up in the search you can see oh pop up is the simplest but I wanted a panel because I want to get a background on it and I don't need the, the buttons that you get with the window dialogues and the other dialogues they have like window dialogue has an X in the top bar to close it and then the accept has an OK and confirmation says kind of like for are you sure kind of messages like cancel and okay and file choosing dialogue but for this one I just wanted a panel like a background that pops up with the functionality of the pop-ups so that's that so we, we've given that we got our pop-up there and we have a child node for the text to display which is just a simple label with a text field which will be populated with a text message and for the fading I've put in an animation node and if we go down here we can see the animation is over 0 to 1 second long we can edit the time there to make it longer or shorter and I've got these keyframes I've got three keyframes the first one is there let's make the panel visible you can see there so if we drag this along, you can see what happens. After 0.7 seconds, it's now going to ramp down to being disappearing. The alpha value will be, go down. So and if we play it, you can see it stays up for 0.7 seconds and then disappears. So it's quite easy to do this with an animation play node. What you do, you you drop this node down into your tree and if you click on animation there you can 
create a new animation, but I've already got mine. I've called it Fade. And that gives you like these keys so you can click on anything, any property in the scene tree to animate it. In our code, I've built in a simple way to test it. I have put in an export var called test. And if we click here, you can see that, go to the top, we can select on or off for testing. If we run the scene without that, it doesn't do anything. If we run the scene with this checked, it will cycle through the, the tests. And uh, let's look at the code. We have uh, this export var test, which we set true or false, and then in the inspector, and then we have a gutter offset, that is, that is how far the pop-up will be from the bottom of the screen. And we have this uh, underscore state, that means it's a private variable not appearing outside of the scope of this scene. Even if we instance the scene, that will not be accessible outside. And then when it is instantiated, we when the scene is instantiated, the ready function runs. And we do a quick check if it's test, if we want to test and it's, it, it's set to true, then the timer, we have a timer here that runs and then we've connected its signal, click there, you can see the signal on timer timeout calls this function which runs the tests, which is a simple state machine which takes the value of the state which is initially zero. So when it's zero, the timer wait time is set to two seconds and we want to test the timer starts and 100 milliseconds later it times out and then calls the callback function here on timer timeout and we match the state to zero and the timer wait time is set to two seconds and at the end of this block we make the state advance to the next one so the next after two seconds it times out again and then goes to this position where it notifies us. So let's look at our notify function here. This um, has an input of the text value that we want to display and it sets the properties of the pop-up panel. It, it gets to the label within it and sets the text value of the label to the, our input of the text which comes from here at the various stages of the state machine such as hello and this and that and we pop up centered and we say set as min size which makes it shrink down if the text so that is one reason why we run three tests here because it starts off with a short word and then a long sentence and then back to a short word so this this is gonna be tested so it pops up center that puts it in the middle of the screen and then we minimize the size so it just fits around the, the text and then we have to pop up centered again because when it shrinks down it will become offset from the middle of screen so we have to do it again just to get it aligned to the center and then to move it towards the bottom of the screen there's no easy way of doing it apart from the manipulating the rectangle position so we get the get the viewport rectangle size and we're only interested in the y the vertical components and then we take off our gutter offset value which was in the export var here which we set over there so we can adjust it and we that repositions the pop-up and now the pop-up is displayed and then we run our animation of fading it away and like I said we start off fully visible and then after 0.7 seconds we make it start to ramp down to invisible with alpha of zero and rather than it being a linear ramp I've gone here to select the uh, cubic one so it's more of a curve rather than an abrupt you know triangular kind of descent and when the animation has finished we want to hide the pop-up panel 
So we have a, a signal from the animation player. We've connected it to our script. And this says pop-up panel hide. That allows this slot to, you know, resize to the next bunch of text when it pops up again. So hopefully you found that interesting and like and subscribe if you want more. Cheers, see you. And we need to stop recording now, mate. What do we do? I want.